These are my mostly OCMD commands on a Windows environment system and I want to share it with you because they are very simple and very basic but it is very very helpful. I mostly use it for troubleshooting or checking something on my system or network. If there's a command and you think it's very useful that I did not mention it here, feel free to comment it down below. Give us a quick overview of that command, how to use it and what's the purpose so that everyone is going to watch this video can learn from it as well. Come on, join me and I'm going to show you. Let's start up by using the ping command. Open up CMD and in this ping command is going to try to check a connectivity between your computer to the other device or the other end. So what we're trying to do here is we're going to check if my computer can connect to google.com or access google.com. So I typed in ping google.com. Press enter and it will give me some results here. So let's post this one and try to evaluate this information. So the ping command translated google.com into its IP address. So this is the 172.217.160.78. This might be a little bit different for you because it depends on the location we're in. So Google has a lot of IP address out there and it depends who is responding via your location. The other thing you need to look here is the time. How fast is the connectivity responding to us? Wherein that is 41 milliseconds for me. All right. Now, this also means to say that I'm getting a reply back from Google, which means to say I have a good connectivity to Google.com. Unless you're going to have a result that says request timeout or destination unreachable. That means to say that there's something wrong with your connectivity to Google.com or the network or IP address you're trying to reach. We can also try to ping the IP address of my router and check if we have a connectivity. So that's the way you do it, just ping and then the IP address. And we're getting a result that means to say, we have a connectivity to my router. Now there is a switch command that is very useful. So you can do this one, ping Google dash T, wherein this will be a continuous ping. You can do this one if you're trying to see the stability of your internet like mine. Sometimes if your internet is going on and off, something's wrong with the network. This will go like requested timeout, destination unreachable. Because even if you have the speed test on the internet, if you try to check your internet speed here, you can only get the ping and then the bandwidth. So you cannot check whether your internet is cutting off or not. So just like that, and that's what you get from the speedtest.net. That's why I like using the ping dash t command because if you want to quickly monitor your internet, if it's going slow, it's cutting off, you can just type in ping dash t command in the IP address or the domain name and it will give you a real time monitoring. Maybe you want to monitor it maybe five minutes, 10 minutes. You just want to see if it is stable. So uh, this is a very good way how to check that one. Now, if you want to stop this one, just press control C on your keyboard and it will cut it off. Next one here is your IP config. This IP config will give you a summary of the network adapters, the information, the IP address that your network adapters have. Press enter and these are the list of your network adapter on your computer. For me, this is my laptop. So um, loopback adapter, I have a lot of um, virtual network adapters here. Uh, you can see that one VMnet1, VMnet0, VMnet8, okay? So they have their own IP address, but those are virtual. Now let's focus on this wireless LAN adapter wherein it is connected to my Wi-Fi. You have the IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway. But if you want to have a more detailed information about these adapters, you can go for IP config all, and this will list more information like MAC address, DNS servers, DHCP servers. Now let's focus on the wireless LAN adapter that I have here. So it will give you the description about it, the model, the MAC address, what kind of um, uh, IP addressing it is using, uh, more, least obtained, least expired, DHCP server, DNS server, and a lot more compared to the first one, IP config. So just type in ipconfig slash space slash all. 
So that will give you that information. The next command we're going to look into is ipconfig space slash flash DNS. This will wipe out everything that is mapped to your DNS or what we see cached. So if you're having with uh, something a problem with accessing a website, sometimes you just go ahead and do a ipconfig flash DNS and it will kind of clear all those things out there, especially if they have updated the IP address of a certain website. Next up is ipconfig slash release. This will kind of release all the IP address information that is given to your Wi-Fi adapter so that if you want that one to kind of um, uh, maybe your IP address is hooked up with your adapter. Uh, sometimes you need to do this one IP config space slash release and it will remove it. You can look at my wireless adapter here. All the IP address information were gone. Now to retrieve all those or kind of get a new set of IP addresses, you go for IP config space slash renew. And it will grab those IP address or yeah, network details or informations from a certain DHCP server or DNS server. There you go. It was able to pull up those information. So we got the same IP address since it is mapped to our physical address. So no problem. The next command is your tracer. And you can use that one by typing tracer at google.com. If you want to trace a certain domain name or IP address, we can just type in tracer and then the domain name. What this tracer command can do is it's going to track or maybe trace, the right word is trace, the, is, um, where, where your packet is jumping into before it's going to reach google.com. That's why it's called tracer in short for trace route. What is the route you are going into before you are going to reach google.com? So you can see in the number one, that's my router. And after my router, that is already outside my router. The couple IP addresses that you can see there is my ISP. And after that ISP are some IP address out there that routers are using so that they can go to google.com. Now we are on the 10th hop. So it's taking time. You can also see the response times there. It's 40, 41, 42 milliseconds. And in the 12th, same. And in the 13th, I think this is Google. Yeah. We reach google.com, trace complete. So that's how much or how many routers you need to jump into before you can reach Google. Let's try in Facebook so that we can compare. Okay. First is a bit the same. That's my router, that 180.10. And the same, 254.61.20.21. The Okay, we have my ISP and then another ISP. Those are ISP routers. Okay, another ISP. So there are actually three here compared to Google. We have only two. So it's going another path. And you can see the IP address that's 31, the 13, that's 77, the 35. So that's the eighth. And we have the ninth, and then we have the tenth. Oh, we reach Google. I mean Facebook. So we only have need ten hops before we reach Facebook. So at least you can see how it's going to process this information before it's going to reach a certain domain name. The next command is ns lookup. You can just type in NS lookup and put in the IP address. It will translate this one into the domain name. So sometimes it's not usable if you use the Facebook to the IP address, but you can use this one reverse. So if you put in the IP address, then it will give you 
who owns this one who reg who registered this ip address so you can see nslookup facebook.com and it will give me the ip address or the other way around nslookup the ip address and it will give me facebook.com so you can you can try and do that one to websites so that you can check their ip address or in reverse the ip address so that you can show the domain name okay so like google.com the same and last but not least it's the netstat space dash an this will give me a list of all the ip address mapped to the port numbers that are communicating to my laptop so you try to see you have the 000 colon 135 that's a port number into a foreign address but it is listening state now you can see here below this is a loopback ip which means this is my laptop 127.0.0.1 that's a loopback address and then we have the ip address 180.94 that is my ip address communicating to these ip addresses outside so those are public ip addresses that this laptop is communicating to so you can see those ones and it is mapped with the port numbers as well now that's just about it uh, those information are very useful if you are troubleshooting something you'll get to know more about this if you're going to use it soon but um, that's it for today and i hope you have learned something from my video see you in my next video Bye bye